All right, and here we are. We're back for some more God Hockey. I'm here today with Mark Gignac from Bauer. He's the guy we call Jiggy, and we're going to get Jiggy with it with some Bauer goal today. How are you, Mark? I'm good, Dana. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining me today. I think you have uh, you you have a you have like the name of someone who was born for goaltending. I think it really it sort of fits well with that uh, that sort of the the Quebec goalie factory name uh, index. You know, exactly. And the the exact moment Will Smith's song came out um, was in elementary school, and Jaguar's run to the <laughs> Cup Finals was in high school. So it was perfect time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right place, right time. So uh, let's let's start off just a little bit, even just about you. How did you uh, find your way into goaltending, and and how did we make our way to 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 how we got here today? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story. My I started as a player, first year beginners, um, but I grew up in a small town called Tilsonburg, Ontario, mm -hmm. and my father was a goaltender, and he was buddies with Colin Campbell, who at the time would always run a uh, hockey school back home in the summers and one summer he calls up my dad and just says hey by chance is your kid a goalie and my dad wanting to help his buddy out said yeah no problem he's a goalie what do you need he's like oh I need a goalie for the the older session today over at the hockey school so like yeah okay he'll be over in a bit so he ran down to the local sports store grabbed some used gear and then threw me a net so that was kind of the, the story of how I ended up being a goalie was thanks to Colin Campbell. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. After, yeah, Tilsonburg, Ontario. Good senior A market. About six years ago, we moved back home. I was living with Hamilton with my wife, and we had just started having kids and want to be closer to family. So we moved back to the area. And funny enough, they needed a backup goalie. So I strapped them back on and played for the same senior A team my dad had played for back in the day. So it was kind of That's cool. That's good. And then he got to come out and watch uh, watch me do my best on the bench and hope not to go in. Very good. Get the towel around your neck and everything, right? Exactly. I played the role perfectly, and it was nice to get some real shots at practice instead of men's league to test out some gear. So it worked out well. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So, so working into uh, how you arrived with with Bauer, how did that how did that sort of get you there? Yep. So I went to uh, Brock University. I actually. Uh, graduated with another famous Brock grad, Kyle Dubas, the same year. So we went okay. to the program at the same time. Um, Kyle has a little bit more stressful job than I do, I think, uh, these days, but he's <laughs> yeah. a good guy nonetheless. And we graduated at the same time. I took a job in Oakville with a sales agency that at the time was representing Nike, uh, Nike Apparel. Uh, they had the Hockey Canada license. And basically, I was just a what what do they say in Fubar? A swamper, out back, yeah. just, uh, <laughs> yeah. just doing any any job I could do, and and kind of work my way up there at, at uh, the sales agency. And then at the time, Nike still owned Bauer. Mm -hmm. There's somewhat of a connection between uh, the Nike group and the Bauer guys, and they'd always do skates in the mornings in Streetsville. So as again as a goalie, just kind of fortuitous opportunity. They needed a goalie, so. I, I offered to drive out and started skating with the Bauer guys, got to know them a little bit, and it piqued my interest to start kind of asking about jobs and what could be opening and what's coming down the pipeline. And I saw an opportunity in their sales department, Bauer. And funny enough, I lost that job to your current rep, Andrew DeSellis. So okay. full circle, full circle, Deckles and I are good buddies now, but he was bilingual. So he sniped me there on that first uh, opportunity, but uh, everything happens for a reason. And a year later, a goal sales role opened up and I had already interviewed and they knew I wanted in and they knew I was a goalie and it just worked out that I could join Bauer, uh, thankfully, after a second try. That's good. That's good. And now here we are, you're, you're, you're running the show. You're the man behind the scenes. You're, you're, you're the one responsible for some of the, some of the amazing uh, designs that we see. So, so you've been, I mean, for, for, for quite a while then, I mean, so you've, you've experienced the full um, from the old Supreme to the new Supreme from into the, the Odin uh, series. You've been there for all of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, what do you think let's let's even go from Henrik Lundqvist 
I think like in the Olympics would have been yeah. kind of that first. Yeah, it would have been. Um, and and w- w- what are some of the things that you like that have been different? And then we'll get into specifically the pad, the new pad. Yeah, we were at the time, you'll remember, we were kind of making me too products, right? Mm-hmm. And we had a, we had a different team and it was frustrating as a sales guy to see the opportunities and not be able to optimize on them on new things. And the goalie community really kind of sparked that interest of, holy cow, he's wearing something completely different. Goaltending had been kind of a a traditional market place, right? Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. Henrik was the one that kind of sparked the fuel of Odin, which at the exact same time, we restructured the goalie team. So that's when we got our, our new team on board and had a fresh new look at the business. Um, Henry, our, our pro, um, our product manager at the time moved over to pro. I moved into the brand role. We hired a, a young Spencer Freer who you've had on, on this yeah, podcast. Yeah. Um, we hired a bunch of young pro reps to get after young kids and we just reset the button on, on Bauer Goalie. And it was a lot of that was due to Henrik Lundqvist willing to try something new and, and us trying to capitalize on it. It's been a long road since then and a lot of ups and downs. And we, we learned a lot on innovation and what it takes to, to do something crazy, but make sure it works for the masses. And it it took a couple iterations, but I think uh, I'm happy with where we got and what we did back in the day and, and thankful for the King for taking a chance and trying something new and different and, and it, it's funny how it, it worked out. But uh, yeah, it was really due to him and then us restructuring our team that got us to where we are today. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I, you're, you're right. It, it, goalie tends to be uh, a little bit more on the conservative side where you, you do get you do get where guys are resistant to change and they, they want the just the old thing. I know even if you go back even and farther, you know, going from leather straps to nylon straps to no straps and you know buckles to skate lace to now bungee setups and and yeah. and things like that you you certainly see uh, resistance to some of those types of things and and yeah but but uh, but at the same time then you do also see i think because of that the breakthroughs become those bigger steps where you know whether it's whatever manufacturer whatever whoever the guy is who comes up with it whether it's just yeah we're taking all the straps off and we're just going with two basically two velcro straps or yeah. whether it's we're, we're revolutionarily changing the internal structure of our pad we're going to use a completely different outer material on our pad we're going to print on the graphics instead of cut and sew we're gonna you know all of those things that go into it we're gonna you know fully integrate the knee into the pad we're gonna make everything move together we're gonna you know so you do you get that a little bit of resistance that bit of conservativeness towards it but then you also get those like i said those those really good breakthroughs that really push through and that's when you see the change yeah, and I think it's good too. You have to be true to the position. And I think that's where goalies will will call you out on it, right? If you try to do something that looks crazy and doesn't work, then you get yeah. and you fall down. If you can do something that's different, looks crazy, but then works on the ice, it's mm-hmm. slowly, it's funny to watch. And it's happening with the Connect Skate right now, right? Like we saw the resistance off the hop. It definitely is crazy and it's definitely different, but then you see more and more kids try them and then it's kind of just like Odin we were getting torched pretty bad by the consumers and then the ones that tried it and wore it are in Bauer still today so it's kind of yeah I like those instances what I don't like is when you know innovation for just the sake of it and we we Mm -hmm. have our battles with R&D sometimes they want to make a big splash or they want to do something crazy and we have to say no because it's not going to be authentic to the goalies who want it to work on ice. So I don't, I don't think you'll see us put a hole in the blade anytime soon. <laughs> for the oh, that was a great, no, that was a great troll though. That was uh, for anyone who didn't, I guess it was on your Instagram and your Twitter was, uh, was introducing the, uh, the ADV or the, um, the, the, you know, the, 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 with the, the player stick that has the yeah. slot and that, it would be perfectly uh, ironically bad move to do that on a, on a goalie stick. But I thought that was an excellent, uh, excellent April fool's move. 
Exactly. We try to have some fun and not always be serious, but uh, that, yeah. that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you, you mentioned the, the connect skate. I think that's the one thing that the fewest people have seen. Can we maybe let's, let's, let's intro, let's do that first. Yeah. Uh, walk me through how it works. Uh, obviously the, I, I can't just say, show me the one thing that's different. It's very different from most skates yeah. that any goalie playing currently in particular uh, yeah, has worn. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you take it over. Yeah, absolutely. So I got one here with me today. You will remember the the Micron Lang mm-hmm. uh, historical Bauer platforms. So Bauer back in the day was part of a bigger company called CanStar. Yep. And CanStar had multiple brands, and underneath that umbrella was was the Micron family of skates. And it was really inspired by the ski industry, where some employees in Saint Drome on a on a very cold snow day decided to take their ski boots, put a holder on and go for a rip around the, the parking lot. So the parking lot had frozen over. They just for fun went for a skate and the guys kept coming back saying, oh my God, these feel unbelievable. It started as a joke and they had this hinge and they had the flex on the length on the microns. So fast forward, Bauer was using that platform in a lot of their player skates and goalie skates. But then they revolutionized with the Bauer 100s, which was the Mazoka quarter. You finally had widths. Um, mm-hmm. They were a lot more comfortable. And from there, the, the rest is history for Bauer yeah. player. And we as goalies were tethered to the platforms, whatever player came out with. We're cutting off the tendon guard and putting on a goalie holder or cowling at the time, and away we go. Mm-hmm. So we kind of lost that flexibility because we were partnered with the player guys and we had to lean on their tooling. So fast forward, uh, we had just launched Odin. We're getting into 2017. It's our 1X year. Our skate had worked great at retail in 1S. We were the first to remove the cowling, but Mm -hmm. the at the time took advantage of us not getting after the pro guys with that same um, innovation. We really had Henrik. So we thought, okay, we got Henrik, no problem. But they came in and gave all those older goalies those soft recorders, cowlingless options, and and really attacked the market at the NHL. And we just had to sit back and watch our grass get cut. So one after one after one, we're getting our our business taken out at the NHL, but retail's going like this. So mm-hmm. we went to the advanced team in 2018 and said they kept wanting to do a pad, right? They saw what worked, they want to keep doing a pad. We said, no, we're good. We'll take the pads can you guys please work on a skate? Because what we're getting is goalies wanting flexibility. They want more depth. They're having comfort issues. They want attack angle. We kind of laid the laid yeah. the list, the laundry list out for the advanced guys. And they said, okay, no problem. And what did they come back to us with? The Lang Micron traditional skate with that liner inside and the exterior with a hinge. I said, okay, that's very funny, guys, but we need something. <laughs> for real here. But in all reality, our um, he passed away recently. Our, our pro shop manager, Jerry Trem, swore by the skates and still wore them, even playing men's league. So I knew there was something there. The advanced guys know there was something there, but we right. had to kind of bring it into the future. So I met with um, Jason Rowe. He is the Atomic Boot brand manager. So he does everything for the ski boots for Atomic. Uh, but he was a local kid. He grew up in London, Ontario. And I got hooked up with him by, through, the, through the Source guys, um, who you know, Mike and the fellows at London Source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I said, hey, you should talk to Jason because he knows all, everything about ski and he can talk to you about what to, what to do. So bounced some ideas off him, showed him what we were cooking up and what we were thinking. And he was unbelievable because he said, hey, you got to use this material. You got to use this company. You got to use these buckles. So the material is Grillamid of the shell, and that's from Switzerland. The buckles are a company called Gudo, and that's from Italy. And the Ultralon Liner is a company that specializes in foams. But all three of those companies and all three of those materials are currently being used in the ski industry today. So they're proven known vendors that can supply us. So we took the idea of the advanced guys with this Mm -hmm. old school micron hinge and the idea of current new technologies and kind of fused them together. 
and it started to take shape. What really works for me on an innovation is when a goalie refuses to give back a sample. <laughs> yeah. so, so if you have something crazy and you develop this capture or a block or a mask or pad, whatever it be, and you give it to a goalie and you say, hey, can you test this out for me? And at the end of the skate, they come over and say, oh, yeah, it was really, really great. And I say, oh, do you want to keep trying it? Like, no, I'm good. Yeah. Cancel the project immediately <laughs> yeah. and do not continue. So what happened with the skates was we got Luke uh, Cavillan. Um, he's, a, he's an Ottawa native, but he's playing for the Flint Firebirds. They unfortunately just got beat out last night in the playoffs, but he had a hell of a run. He is in the same connect skates that he wore in the summer as a sample for the entirety of the season so he was the first one that came to the bench and he's like smiling and he doesn't want to show off how happy he is but he's like these are these are unbelievable and yeah. that's not, okay we're on to something obviously there's stuff you got to refine throughout the process of development but it's for me it's always the goalies that are going to tell me if something's good or not i can't luke was the first and then we hooked up with francois brassard who helped us develop some of the pads he went up to hartford and then down to the east coast ended up winning east coast goal of the year and he's in the prototypes exact same samples so those two were kind of the initial ones that gave us confidence that this could work and then from there we started working with design put it into the normal r d calendar and start picking away at at how to bring it to life and bring it to kids because what i've seen is if you can't do something just for the nhl right it was an right. nhl project we had to get after vh true on their skate business because they they took it from us but at the same token i can't put something in the nhl and not put it into retail and give it to the kids too so that's what right. we worked on for this past season is to bring it to life yeah so uh but I think what I think is is interesting is the, the way you describe it is that you like you give sort of you give the list of what you want this product to be. They develop something and you go, this can't be it. But they but they literally go, no, no, this does all the things you want it to do. This is this does everything you asked for, regardless of uh, and, and it's it's what it is, is I guess it's ironic because the instant the instant reaction is, oh, it's what are we wearing langs again? You know, it's, you, you get that or, or, Oh, it's just a ski boot or, you know, but, but really who cares if it works? Like if it's, if it's the product that you need it to be, then it doesn't matter if it looks like something we used to make or used to wear that, that really wasn't that great. I don't, I wouldn't think to begin with from those older ones, but, but if this is what we need to make it, I mean, and you guys are the ones who I would say are the, the ones to do it because you do you you're not afraid to take swings uh and and that really you know it's sort of almost surprising that it's like well here it is it's like well but it's gonna work so i i yeah. I, I think that's, that's i think that's really great about it yeah and that's the trick right is to try and find that balancing act between crazy and just seeing a diamond in the rough sometimes right yeah. trying to get to the bottom line and it's the goalies that are going to tell us if it's legit or not so i think i think it's a balance right you can't do that on every product every year you have to sure. build some following and some awareness like you're seeing it on mock pads right in the stores guys that are look and girls that are looking at mock and interested in the products odds are they're they've seen ultrasonic they've seen to us pro they've seen the history of supreme and they have confidence that it's going to be good because yeah. there's some tenure there i think with I like to do a crazy innovation every five years, but the fun thing about goalie is I can pick a project that isn't the same all the time, right? Yeah. I don't have to put on pads every year. I could do a mask, a stick, a skate. So sure. that's what I like about goalie is I get to touch a little bit of every product. Oh yeah. 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 And well, I mean, look, if you came up with a crazy new innovation on Supreme pads every two years, like yeah. it's almost like, well, what was wrong with the, like, why did you have to go? I thought you told me two years ago that this is great. And exactly. now you're completely revamping. Like, you know, that almost yeah. doesn't even really work. I I, I think that's, yeah, I, I would say, I mean, even when most people are asking, I would say, well, remember, they made these changes last run. These are, these are changes they made because they really thought they were great. Now we're in, 
you know, not a complete holding pattern because there's always little tweaks, but I get, yeah, you kind of got to let something run at least two runs before. And that brings us to basically a four year, even if to be, to be, and you're sort of right in that, in that zone. Exactly. So connect and I, I kind of diverted there on the history of the project. Sure. But the, the product itself is inspired by that key boot and the lang with the hinge. Yep. So it's going to be hard on, on Zoom, but you can see the hinge there. Yep. When you pull the liner out, you can see that's the, the liner mm -hmm. and all that foam. And I'll get to that. But this is where you really see that hinge in action and we put kind of a degrees there on the back so you can see the whole hinge in action mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of the shell and this is the gorilla mid material we got the ski buckles that are micro adjust so vassy's first time wearing them we met him in ottawa we gave him the sample he said hey just give us feedback what do you think we fit them he got we watched the practice he did his thing he got off the ice he texts our pro rep and i'm sitting beside him and he said i'm the first out of the dressing room so he likes how quick the buckles are <laughs> to undo because he's uh, the first out so he, the top strap is the most important this is the one that we really want to crank mm -hmm. so you can get that full flexibility and that this one is really meant just to be snug and to be locking in your back heel okay. but this is all thermoformable so what's really crazy about them and different from the old version is that this is custom fit to your foot in the store, right. the shell and the liner. Mm -hmm. So if someone can come into Just Hockey, talk to you and the team about their skates and you can say, hey, do you want to go get custom fit right now instead of waiting the four to six weeks? Yeah. And now be custom fit to their foot. So the, the liner and the shell are heated in the oven together. And then it comes out, you help the goalie put it on and they just sit down and cool down. And then that, that day they can go for a skate as soon as they're cool to the touch. So that's what we like that benefit for the goalies as much Absolutely. as the on performance. There's now instant custom. Goalies hate waiting. It, exactly. So that's what, <laughs> what's exciting. And you don't know, you know, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get all the time in custom when you are waiting. We do our best, right? We try yep. to diagnose what you need. But what I like about this is that they're so tight, static, unmolded. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to get your foot into an eight. If we mold you, your foot expands the material. Right. So all of a sudden, this liner and shell are formed to your foot because we're using the heat and the shape of your foot to expand the shape. So that's where, you know, no online sales, nothing will be sold. Uh, direct to kids they have to come to an approved dealer they have to get fit and go through the process because yeah. if i just sold these to you online and shipped them to your house you can't wear them they're meant to be and they have to be custom fit right right so okay so maybe so i think maybe on this skate um you did a great job on the shell can, can we talk a little bit about the liner and sort of the components of it because I think the what's going to really separate this from when people, you know, when people make the comments about it looking like a Lang or looking like, you know, this isn't just like a, a sock, you know, this is, uh, this is, you know, really, you can notice there's some thickness to it. There's some real, um, there's some real body there. Exactly. And that's where lesson learned on the old school skate. It was crazy thin. And I don't even know how we were all wearing them back in the day. It was uncomfortable as hell. There was no thermoformability and they were like about as thick as your t-shirt. Yeah. So what we did was we, we made a much thicker liner. So you can see very thick and that's where the thermoformability comes in. Mm -hmm. But there's also some protection in here because Ultralon, this company that we're working with, has a poron like material that they call Ultra Stop. That's for okay. impact. So nice protective material. We have these, what we call overlays throughout for durability. So it's hard to tell, but this is a very uh, uh, abrasion friendly footbed so that it works in the skate with the um, rivets. So again, all from ski. So we're not reinventing the wheel here, but we're trying to take things from what they do to make sure that it works for hockey. And then it's just a traditional bower footbed on the inside. But mm -hmm. if you use an aftermarket footbed, they work perfectly. We have multiple goalies throwing their custom footbeds in here. Um, but very thick, very comfy. And the comment is these do feel like a slipper because they're so comfortable. 
Right. What's cool is that when you put that into the shell that's formed to your foot, the comfort level is off the charts because it's formed to you, but it's crazy comfy. And yeah, the reaction is the same every time. It's kind of, holy cow, these are flexible. Wow, these are comfy. So that's kind of the history of it. Yeah. I, I well, so I I know I remember like the first time when I saw them. I think even even for me talking about like traditional and or or even just conservative on change. I remember and I saw the skate and I and I think my first reaction was something to the effect of, you know, Mark, don't don't make me sell this to guys, you know. But but just but that's the initial reaction. And then I I've actually put it on and and I had a good to handle it and things like that. And and once you once you sort of get the gist of it it's it's it really makes a lot of sense you know and even you know the 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 buckles all the attachment pieces those are all those are can all come on and off so if we need to replace things those parts are all available it's not like it's not like a roller blade where you know you lose a a snap and you're done exactly and that's where lesson learned on odin right we made that crazy innovation we threw it into the wild and then we had to listen to the consumers on where the issues were because Mm -hmm. it was somewhat rushed. So this one, you know, took the right time. COVID was a little bit of a blessing because it was going to launch in that last season with the 21 skate line. Okay. But we said, you know what, let's pause. We can't get to the factory. We can't get any materials. And it was actually a blessing because it gave us a whole nother cycle of field testing. So we were able to see issues that now the consumer doesn't have to live with that we did the homework on. So we took a page out of Odin on that. And then we took a page out of masks on servicing. So you know how the masks come with a hardware kit or a hardware box. Yep. So if mom and dad want to make an adjustment, they can buy the little hardware box or you guys are going to service someone you have the full kit of parts. That's what we developed. To, everything is adjustable. But even these screws that can adjust the rack, we know, right? If something can come off a product, it can get lost or misplaced. So so those screws are just simple helmet screws that can go with the racking. That's a part. If there's ever an issue, the strap, the buckles, like you said, anything that can come off the product can be serviced at at a good hockey store like yourselves and and make sure that anyone with issues is getting solved immediately Mm -hmm. because it's not just one season, right? consumers are buying products and expecting it to last for a couple seasons if they're done growing and if they're in that senior level. So it was really a little bit of Odin, a little bit of a mass knowledge session to combine what we could do to service the product. Yeah. And just maybe a last thing on the skate. So uh, full sizes only. Correct. Because that is so thermoformable. Yes. We've seen the skates go up a full size but really we're just doing recommending that if you're a seven and a half, you're going to go into a seven shell and the scanner will dictate this and help you get fit for it. Recommending you go down to a seven because you're going to expand the skate. If you went up to an eight, you're not going to be able to expand it as much because your foot isn't as tight. So no need for half sizes and no need for widths because we've seen it fit from a C to a triple E width. And in goalie. So it has that ability to open up when heated. Is that even a guy that's got a much wider foot? still exactly. gets in comfortably exactly and it's actually saved us a couple times um case in point sebastian cosa he's a red wings prospect mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. he's still playing thankfully in the playoffs with the edmonton Oil kings he has a massive foot he's a 13 foot crazy wide and we could never fit him in traditional bower skates we we're having issues equipment managers getting upset our reps getting upset I said, screw it. Send them the connect sample we brought in because we do an initial size run of 13. Yep. From seven to 13. And we fit them, fit perfectly. And it's been in them ever since. So we never had that capability in a 13 that could go up to a 14 and fit that quadruple wide foot. Um, so it, it's helping us solve some problems in that case. Yeah. At this moment, which I think will be good for goalies too, to, to not have to wonder Am I in between a size? And you guys don't have sure. to stock and guess on sizing between you know skews of lengths and widths. So yeah, good for retail, good for the goalies, and and so far so good in terms of fitting. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly like I I can't wait. I can't wait to have to have them so I can actually put feet in them. It should be it should be really good. Um, something I already have received and something I already am putting goalies into is the new mock pad 
and and it's been very good it's great reaction and and a lot of goalies getting into it sort of even right away and using i know you and i we we last time we met we were at uh we were up in vaughn we were at franco canadian goalie school had a a bit of a showcase day and you guys were on on hand and brought some demo gear and I, i got to see firsthand some guys using it and then we've you know, our stock starts to show up and even some of those goalies I spoke to that day have already come down and placed their orders or picked up something that we had on the floor. So maybe let's go uh, into a little bit of the, some of the changes that we've seen with mock and some of the things that have always worked that are still working and just do a little bit of rundown on that for anyone who hasn't quite had a chance to get it in their hands yet. Yep. And uh, so the big change is the calf bracket and this consistent piece of the puzzle is the knee bracket so anyone that saw ultrasonic uh, we launched in 20 with that new knee bracket we're keeping that because that's been definitely a success we're bringing that down to the calf level where we've introduced a calf bracket that's going to go you won't be able to see it but you'll definitely be able to feel it so in between the plate and the pillow and the wrap we've developed a calf bracket just like the knee to allow goalies to have that seal when they're going down in the butterfly Mm -hmm. And you can actually hear it. What I thought was cool about the demo uh, up in Vaughn was it's the first time I had multiple goalies on the ice in mock and just hearing that sound. It's a bit of a boom. It go down. Exactly. Because yeah. you're getting that full ice seal and you're getting that performance. So uh, the crazy new innovation is definitely that calf bracket, but we know it works because it worked at the knee and the testers loved it again at the hop. So that one has been so far so good. The other new innovation is the strapping. So Supreme for us is all about coverage and control. So you want to be big and you want to be able to control your movements where vapor is all about agility, dynamic movements. You want to be, you know, feel a little bit more flexible. Supreme's for that kid with the huge butterfly that, that I'm jealous yeah. of that can, that can control the net with their coverage. So we developed a strapping system we're calling Tune Fit Plus that supports that. So it's a little bit higher, a little bit more robust, but still fully adjustable. And then we went uh, simply based on data of our custom sales and pro input, we went one level stiffer than an ultrasonic. So more of a break below the knee, and you're going to get that shape instead of this shape. Mm-hmm. We'll reserve that for vapor. That's what it's meant for but a a level four stiffness on our customizer because Supreme is definitely our most popular NHL pad, OHL pad. It's the pad that that high level pro kid has been using, whereas Vapor is a little bit more friendly or a little bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. It's a little more forgiving. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, we kind of separated the two. Vapor is our lowest flex. Supreme is a four. It's extra stiffs too much, but we wanted to make that a little stiffer. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. But like you said, in custom, you can choose anything. If kids are coming in, they can swap graphics, swap specs. So that's that's where we wanted to separate the two families a bit, but do something new for Supreme. We know Supreme yes. users would appreciate. Yeah, so I, I know when we do talk about shape, shape is sort of my key on most pads where I almost look for shape first. And someone will say, oh, it was, you know, let's say about market for, for an example that someone might say, well, yeah, but that's like, that's kind of like their, their stiff pad. Like, I don't know if I want to wear a stiff pad and, but, but you have to kind of try to explain to somebody it, it's not stiff and that it doesn't move. It's stiff that it's basically the pad is like, like you're saying, like it's got that sort of preformed shape to it, you know, and exactly. the pad is stiff because it doesn't need to move. It's already in its you know you get like i always do that it's i mean this this is terrible yeah. on video but when you get that where everything kind of locks into place um just by dropping down and and because it's there you don't exactly. need the pad to bend it's already be- it's bent and then made stiff essentially is uh is i guess the way i would best describe it i think my my favorite i mean it, uh, he's not, he mostly was not a bauer user but my what my favorite goalies nhl goalies pads ever i think is michael neuverth cuz he has such a steep angled bent on his pads i always they always stood out to me and i always yeah. say like i want would want to get my hands on one just to, to put it on and feel it uh, as it moves but but yeah. and and then you've got like say on vapor you've got a rounder pad so it's more gradual but it starts yeah. even lower and continues all the way up it it's a way to sort of accomplish kind of the same thing 
in two different ways, but it definitely gives you a bit of a different structured feel. Personal, personal preference and shape and, you know, what you need in a, in a pad and, and mock wasn't just the pads. It was also the glove. So um, what we did change completely is the catcher. Mm -hmm. So Ultras 2S Pro was one of our best ones in the NHL. Ultrasonic was great in the NHL, but Vapor kept surpassing Supreme at retail. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because you have two different consumers. You have a six foot four behemoth who has can get their hand fully deep into a wide open catcher. And you have people like me who have normal shaped hands and, and need a catcher that closes properly uh, yeah. for our size. So what we did was we tried to take the Supreme coverage, but make it more friendly for the hand. So we added some grip throughout the finger. So it's easier to grip inside. Mm -hmm. And we added a new wrist strap. That's going to be better for range of motion, but also keep you snug in that. What is a very wide catcher. And that's yeah. why the NHL guys like so it. So that's but. that new strapping essentially removes the traditional over the wrist. We now come come sort of more on the back of the hand now there is an adjustment place so you can play around with yep. that and even on the back of the hand i know also it's a little bit uh it's a moved up almost a little bit as well yep exactly and we're just trying to get them deeper into what is a supreme platform so same break mm -hmm. angle same wide feel but now yep. deeper into the glove so you can close it properly and it, you bank you you nailed it properly the the wrist is adjustable but also in custom, because we know the way goalies are, we added that option for a traditional wrist strap in custom. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it on the customizer. If anyone wants that and wants to retain it, it just goes beneath that spot where the current one is. But um, really, it's the grip that's helping everyone close yeah. that glove now instead of have it kind of be awkward on the hand for retail. Yeah, I, I think anyone who was just going to order the traditional, what I would say is you need to put on the stock glove first and feel because... I, I, again, sometimes when you see something and I remember you, you were mentioning as you were handing me a glove that, you know, you can see here where we've done the wrist and I went, Oh, why are you taking that off the wrist? It's going to, and then I put it on. I went, Nope, this works. No, this is, this is good. And, and you are right. The, from a, from a glove standpoint, Hyperlite in particular, really kind of, it, it sort of, it blew my socks off really is, is what it did. And, and it was unbelievable, great feel and everything closes so smooth. But now this year with the mock, it's the same thing. Like it, it's got a, I always say like a, it glides, like the clothes, just the clothes just comes over and very naturally there's no bumping. There's no, it just really, really comes together. So nice. And again, you're right. The grip, I even think the hand positioning in it is really good. The, the glove to me seems a, almost a little more compact, um, this year i don't know if anything really changed or if it's just some of the lines but but i've had a couple of people say oh it it, it almost looks a, a little a little smaller now it's it's really not but it almost has that really sort of trim exterior look but um yeah. i i'm i'm thinking there's a lot of pucks are still going to go in that glove yeah we try to aesthetically clean up the backhand they were always getting a little sloppy so we clean up the backhand cuff but I think what they're seeing is we added a lot of protection in the palm because retail goalies are buying one catcher a year. We wanted it to still close, but we we took some pieces of our pro palm and put it into the game ready. Mm -hmm. So it's a little thicker, a little wider throughout, which is a good thing for those kids buying one a year. And they don't have the luxury of three catchers in the NHL and yeah. a practice palm and a game ready. And a, so we, we just added a little protection there and that's, creating yeah. a visually more compact, but circumference still great coverage. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, and now uh, I often refer to it as the most exciting piece of equipment in the goalie bag, the blocker. What have we, uh, what have we done new on the, on the blockers? Everyone always says the blockers a blocker it in our instance this year, it was about keeping the same structure of Supreme. So it still has the curved mm -hmm. composite but lighting it up a little bit. Supreme was getting a little heavy. Um, and then the trend is really finger protection with pucks deflecting up the paddle. So we mm -hmm. use pour on material throughout the removable index protection. And then the, the piece that covers the fingers also, when you flip it open, you'll see the XRD pour on logo. So we're just kind of beefing up that section to hop onto the trend of protection and then lighting it up a little bit. 
and then a new cuff that's going to be again kind of like the catcher allowing for range of motion and easier to move around but outside of that supreme users will still see that friendly rebound pop off the face of the blocker and still hear that sound when they're punching pucks out into the stand so i wanted to keep that attribute but just tidy up a little bit of the protection a little bit of the weight yeah yeah uh that's it, it, so it's it is funny when you mention it like that uh, how everything booms basically i mean the catcher doesn't it sticks inside the glove pretty easy but everything else has this real real like vocalization to to playing and to making saves that it's it's uh it's it's almost something to get used to and then i've had kids even when they're describing it to parents as they're trying it on no you you can hear this when you drop down you can hear this when you make a save it's amazing yeah. so it's it's so it's funny that that becomes like a, like you say you know oh we wanted to make sure we maintain that that great uh, sort of audible quality uh, uh, that we have to the to the stuff uh, maybe we'll we'll look uh, if we can on uh, new arm and body uh, yep so mock uh, replacing ultrasonic we kept mm -hmm. the hinge arms that were an innovation on ultrasonic in twenty very popular and very comfortable. It, exactly and given that again supreme coverage but control and you still need to be able to move so adding that to the mock and then we went to the step flat shoulders instead of the big round cap mm -hmm. and a lot of that is about movement but it's also about trying to get them nhl approved and get our chest into the nhl which worked with hyperlight so we're hoping this can help work with the standard mm -hmm. unit to be nhl approved but still uh, work in progress. We have the equipment manager show uh, mid June, so we'll find out about that for mock. Um, yeah. But for retail, it's that that unit everyone loved in ultrasonic. Now with new caps, cleaned up elbows, a little bit of tidier throughout, mm -hmm. but with that hinge arm. And then we ramped up the forearm and bicep protection again. Seems like I'm saying that every year, but the goalies are are constantly requesting for those units to be tanked. goalies love complaining about arm protection <laughs> i've never i don't think i've ever worn a chest protector and made a save off the arm and go oh i need more protection here but it happens exactly. i think it's a i think it's become a bit of a like um like you're not cool unless you say that like you know something needs more arm protection and an arm and chest when you're talking yeah. about it you know yeah uh, but you know beefing them up obviously is nicely uh, this is the one thing i was going to say that that supreme arm now that has the that that sort of hinge feature it is was that specifically like getting away from the extended elbow floater is that that's mostly or mainly taking it more towards probably even further to where the nhl may go uh with the, with with arms yeah. and with shoulders and that that's how it started is the, the nice happy accident was that it was easier to move in so it was yeah it was honestly about trying to get around this nhl measurement method and to bring something that everyone kind of had the same system into the future so our designer whipped this up in the mindset of nhl but then yeah. when we put it on goalies and put it on kids and put it on normal athletes everyone loved it so it was started as nhl but a nice happy accident that you could actually move better but still have that great coverage yeah. so yeah yeah kudos From concept to, the, the to practical application team. it actually exactly. turned out thank god for that <laughs> exactly <laughs> now one area you guys have always really really been dominant is obviously the stick market uh a big innovation uh going back on the ultrasonic stick saw that core spine uh, almost a player stick in back goalie stick in front this year, maintaining most of that design slightly different now. And maybe I'll, I'll get you to ask the, I'll ask you the reasons uh, or some of the functionality, but now it looks as you get to the heel, it, it bends more towards, and again, almost looks like a player blade on the bottom and then a goalie stick blade on the top. So Maybe a few of the functional changes there on what's already been a very popular line and is continuing to as we've uh, got most of our stock in already. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one where the stick R&D team, I always refer to them as more of like NASA of Blainville. So Blainville, our R&D yeah. facility is, is awesome in terms of churning out great products, but it seems like the stick team 
uh, always leads the way in, in new and innovation ideas. So you're, you're exactly right. We took that ergo spine and we extended the bottom portion and the top portion out into the blade. So all that is doing is shaving a little bit of weight, but it's optimizing the geometry. When you take that hard rim behind the net and you're getting that really vibration feel, all it does is absorb that torsion and have a little bit more torsion control, but the main benefit comes down to weight. So ultrasonic was sitting at 610. The mock is now six, sitting around average 600 grams. And the most important part in goaltending, it kind of looks cool. So the, the yeah. play is really about, you know, geometry, torsion control, weight, but also a different look for the goalies and, and something unique for them that, that the player guys don't have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, the, so some of, some of the keys to that is still maintaining that bit of a rounded edge on the, on the outside of the stick. So it's not just this uh, sort of flat section. And I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's sometimes it's not fair to bring up uh, breakage when you talk about sticks. I don't think I've seen, uh any increase by going to that design i think everything's been generally fine but i think sometimes especially like when you're you know when you're on the internet you 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 someone shares the same picture of a broken stick 30 times it just looks like 30 broken sticks exactly and and that's always our first question is when we're creating something new and different on sticks it comes down to durability because that's really been our our win in terms of the marketplace of great lightweight products, but very durable. So mock actually got an update on the shaft because ultrasonic base was so strong. We were seeing shaft breakage of more than anything. So we reinforced the shaft a little bit with a UD carbon, um, but everything th throughout the blade has been awesome so far and no issues. And the, the biggest thing is taking care of kids when they do have an issue, right? All it yeah. is, is hurt our warranty rates and cost us a little bit more money if there is everything, anything, but we always, want to make sure we're taking care of the consumer and, and doing something right by them to make it right. But so far, knock on wood, we had a couple NHL guys use them and no equipment managers complained, a couple OHL kids and so far so good. There's always unknowns, right? And you, you want yeah. to have a balancing act though of innovation, but still durable and uh, so far so good on the mock. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, I think it's been excellent in the past few years anyway, regardless and, and, I, I I'm expecting it just to continue. So I'm always fairly confident in, um, in, in your guys stuff. Anyway. Um, we also have, uh, we also have one new lid this year. Yep. So the new enemy one, I actually have one here on my desk. So replacing the, uh, VTX. Yep. So VTX, the number one thing on enemy was the chin issues. And mm -hmm. no matter whatever running change we could do, it never really fixed the issue. So what we've done is we have a new, ACL layup, which is the same as what we use in our sticks. Okay. So that's really how you layer the carbon and then simply going to a lot chick, um, thicker geometry. So all that does is, is reinforce the chin and not have those issues with puck impacts or dropping the mask and having damage. Mm -hmm. um, the other big update, which is nice for retail, is we're now using the same wire on both of our families. So the 960 yes. and the enemy one will share the same wire. You no longer have to guess on which wire to bring in. Um, and then the other feedback was just more comfortable. So 960 has been a beast because it's protective but comfortable. Mm -hmm. So what we did throughout the liner is just use a lot of the same materials in terms of pour on. Yep. But then we have a new play, uh, player technology called Defense, Crown, Defense Cloud Tech, which is a lighter based pour on with okay. less sweat retention. So for the goalies, the knock on pour on is crazy comfy, very protective, but it just absorbs sweat like a sponge. Okay. But we like this defense cloud tech because it's lighter and has less sweat retention. So you're not going to be, you know, draining the mask of your sweat after every game. <laughs> there you go. Um, and then simply we went to a recess headband. So it's going to be hard to see on camera but we recess that foam so that you're going to be close to the wire but still be So it sits the, 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 the sweatband sits into the liner. Exactly. And yeah. pre-shaped. So perfect shape to the head to be nice and close to the wire for mm -hmm. a nice. And then we went to uh, expose back plate. Yes. With the harness. So really that's a look, a lot of the pro goalies want, and we wanted to differentiate the difference between a 960 and enemy one. 
So we're giving those little things something of a different facelift, even with the vent holes, right? We're going to more of a yeah. uh, aggressive. They stand out. I, they stand out right away, I think. Uh, and I, I, when I saw that first, the first thing I thought was penetration test yeah. because they, it's a little bit of a b- bigger opening. But obviously, it's I mean, you wouldn't have brought it. Uh, you wouldn't have brought it out if, if it didn't. So exactly. It's really playing around with the geometries to make sure it passes that certification. Mm-hmm. What's great about it is it actually helps airflow too. So you're not getting as hot in the mask. Enemy is always a little bit wider fit. So that little wider face shape. Mm-hmm. And I find it's it's lighter, more airflow. 960 is more of that narrow face shape, meant to be a tank, meant to be that you know go-to trusted product. This is yeah. where we want to try some things, try some innovations, try some new stuff. And that's where the saw system comes back from 2013. So um you'll remember the concept one rhymer wore that in toronto mm-hmm. yeah it was it was an innovation product but it was one of three top end masks and yeah. when we revamped the team and we revamped their product line we said you know what we really only need two let's gas one and yeah. the concept was the the sacrificial lamb if you will yeah but there were some good things about that product so when we wanted to innovate the enemy one we brought back the shock absorbing wire so these bumpers yeah help absorb the impact of the wire yeah so slightly inset so it almost has a bit of a uh, a bit of a spring action or a bit of a a bit of a shock absorber exactly and we saw that from um there's a project online if you look up rethink the rink it's a partnership between carnegie mellon university and the pittsburgh penguins where every year they have the grad students pick a project related to hockey safety and try to just come up with crazy ideas and kind of Thon, if you will, of what what could we do to help make players safer? One year they did dasher boards, another year they looked at player protective, mm-hmm. and then this past project was on masks. So they said, you know, how can we protect goalies better than they are today? And they did this finite element analysis of pucks hitting a cage and found that if it could absorb somehow, the goalies would be safer. And they we worked with them on it and they presented it to us. And I was, I didn't feel like crushing their hearts and telling them we already did that back in the day in 2013. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it reinforced to us that yes, there is something there. It was something worthwhile to bring back. Exactly. There's a home for it and there's a reason for it. So we, we brought that back for enemy, but outside of that, the same fit, uh, we just relabeled it small, medium, large to make it easier to navigate. Uh, but if you're a fit too, you're going to be a medium in the uh, enemy one. Yeah. And we've gone to that similar to the way the skates are classed fit one fit two uh, exactly. fit three i always exactly. thought it was ironic that you guys started putting numbers on your masks and you started putting small medium large on your pads and it's like <laughs> who's in charge there you know exactly someone's got to be keeping an eye on these things yeah and then uh, we have numbers back back to the pads in the end so it, it that's yeah. one example right you you innovate but you gotta you gotta bend the knee to tradition well it is a it is a nice you know, look, if someone's coming in, coming in and I'm fitting them for pads, they don't need to worry about, oh, like that, that a 35 is like a large. It's, oh, I get it. So my kid, he's a little on the getting towards the larger side. So, yeah. yeah, So, so you don't have to worry about that when you're fitting with someone like me, because I'm just fitting you. I I could just pull a pad and it could, it could be called X, Y, Z, and it wouldn't matter. Cause, but if you're a little, you know, you're trying to correlate the difference and then you go, okay, if things, start to make sense but it to for me for my purposes it really never it never really mattered and it never really made much difference but i i do understand how it for some people it might make things a little a little bit simpler so and that's what we wanted right we wanted to just rethink the process and go get fit properly right mm-hmm. like so many kids are just saying i'm coming out of this i'm that but every brand is a different measurement method and different sure. height and different fit and angles so our yeah. whole thing is Go to the stores, go get fit properly. Well, how you wear it, how, how you strap them, and even your skate size, all, all of those things do kind of go into it a little bit. So there's there's always those little things. But yeah, definitely. It, anything to kind of simplify it a little. And then obviously once they once they hit the uh once they hit the shop and then it kind of takes over from there. Exactly. It's it's good. And and okay, so maybe, maybe what I what I will get to do is because customizers live, it's been live. I've we've been taking custom orders. 
Um, is there anything, anything through the customizer maybe that you want to just talk about that maybe you've gotten some questions on what does this mean? What does that mean? How are we, how are we doing? And, and maybe from, um, maybe from custom to custom pro. Yeah. Yeah. And the biggest advance is really giving goalies the NHL option of swapping graphics. So that's what mm-hmm. I say. You know, if I'm talking to someone at a demo or the stores, it's if you know your vapor and you want a vapor product or a vapor graphic, save the money and just go custom. It's when you want to get into that world of, hey, I'm married to this vapor catcher, but I love the mock graphic and I love the mock look. Yeah, let's go pro custom and I can give you what mm-hmm. Jake Ottinger has and we can give you that that special treatment and that's worth it for those kids if they you know are married to a product and want to swap the graphics. You also get historical models on there. So when you go to Pro Custom, you can get the old 1X blocker that that is the, the split blocker with the, a little bit lighter mm-hmm. board. You lose that rebound pop that the young kids like, but you get that feel that the yep. older goalies appreciate. So you get that model and then you get the ultrasonic catcher. So if someone isn't, you know, mock isn't for them because it is crazy and different than what ultrasonic was, um, we, we let them still order that. And sometimes that's helping Euro pros because Euro pros don't have the same access to the menu that NHL goalies do. So if, and you saw it with Sorokin this year, right? He's in a white catcher because he loves his old one. Yeah. He doesn't want the new one. So we, we let the Euros kind of get what they need in existing models. So you'll get from custom and pro custom, you're going to get the graphic swap options and then a couple blocker and catcher options that you don't see in the normal retail world. Mm-hmm. And then outside of that, it's expanded menu of flex. So I mentioned that extra stiff that we didn't want to do on stock. That's what you can get in pro custom. Um, we offer different strapping options and, and sometimes different color variants. But for the most part, you're going to get the same base menu and you're just going up a level when you go to pro custom. Um, question wise, I think the, the biggest one has really been about visuals and views. And I'll, I'll let your uh, listeners and viewers know we are working on a new platform. So that's why it's currently locked. So um, stay tuned to, to see the new customizer we're working on that we're cooking up. That's going to give you better views and better angles that unfortunately handcuffed us for the launch this year. But outside of that, um, you guys have the custom booklets and custom tools to help mm-hmm. kids in the store know what they're going to get when they purchase. So it's been pretty crazy. Honestly, we've been holding tight to our lead times. So the factory is jamming nicely and no hiccups there. So I think uh, we'll stay consistent for the summer. Yeah, that's one thing that has been a bit of a blessing for us um, with Mock and with the M5 Pro is that, um, I mean, we normally are taking in our stuff, you know, late April, early May, whatever it happens to be. And so much stuff is late, delayed, pushed back, whatever it happens to be. Uh, in particular, uh, senior, we did get, our mock inventory, we did get our M5 Pro inventory, sort of that mid-May, late May. So I actually have stuff to show. I have stuff to sell. I'm I'm able to put all the pegs back on the glove wall so I can fill it up with what's arrived. It was looking bare and we were sticking goalie cut jerseys further and further down to sort of fill up a little bit of the space there. And 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 uh but you've you guys have come a little bit to the rescue and I mean, even still with the, when the sticks came in, I remember, I remember Sean said to me, he goes, well, we got 95 sticks coming tomorrow. And I was like, Oh God, I'm off, but I'll put them all back. At, you know, I'll put them all out. You know, when I, yeah. and, and, and it was great because I, you know, we're looking on a lot of our, a lot of our categories, player and goal. Like we're looking at, you know, bare, bare shelves. And then we've finally been able to, you know, fill some stuff back in, make it look like it's supposed to look when someone walks in and they want that excitement of the pop of the goalie room and seeing all yeah. the colors and all the gear. So I was thankful to that we were able to get that, that stuff. And we'll see as time goes on. I know I just redid our pant display and I just read, you know, because I've had the availability of inventory. So uh, it's been it's been a bit of a godsend lately, and you guys are in first, so you guys are getting sold first. Uh, people are coming in for it, and I think it's going to be partially even just because of the access and because of the products that are coming out. Um, that's going to be the that's going to be something that that really does it uh, for Bauer with us this year. Now uh, to go back to Connect Skate, uh, the official launch date. So 
July 29th. So you'll see the, the fixturing, the fit tools. There is a new fit process. So um, the Just Hockey will have that opportunity to fit mm -hmm. properly. It's not too crazy. It's still a skate oven. Uh, we just have to add that cool down time. So there's some tools to help with that. So you'll see that in stores. You can check it out. But July 29th official, um, we're doing some more PR campaign stuff to get the excitement brewing. Um, but uh, you'll see more and more athletes this summer in it I'm, i've never seen anything this quick be adopted so quick so i'm hoping we can do some damage in the summer and start next year with a little better market share but uh yeah july 29th and you'll see a lot of hype from us on that standpoint it's kind of where we put all our our marketing eggs this year mm -hmm. and we should mention on skate pro elite gsx uh no yep. changes there was uh was was uh in spite of it being a sort of a covid launch it's been uh, fairly successful with us too. In in a yeah. more traditional skate, you still have the option in the pro of having a true like pro level goal skate if you're not into connect as well. Yeah, absolutely. You, we need that safety net, right? There's still goalies in the NHL that aren't going to switch and that's okay, but we don't want to take a Bauer product away from them. So that's where we'll still roll that traditional lineup no matter what. And connect is meant to live as this crazy advanced project. And, and now kids can get their hands on it so it's going to be exciting come july mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I, I can't wait to see it and then uh hopefully we'll be getting some feed into them soon i might even uh bug you if you've got a spare uh sample pair if we can uh like if i can steal it from some of those goalies who don't want to give them back maybe i'll even give it a give it a give it a go i've been given the more or less the go ahead from doctors to start playing again because i had a little bit of a knee trouble so yeah. We'll see what happens, but I got to get out there and I need, I need that stability and support. So that's might be what I'm looking for. This will, this will revamp your career and give you a couple more years. Of, that's of just it. Day. Yeah. Boy, I, I could use them. Believe me. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for joining me, Mark. It's, it's amazing. I really do think it's a great line this year. Everything looks like it, it keeps coming out. And like I said, like, you know, sometimes we joke about, you know, Bauer is the big guy. They're sort of the, they're the evil empire, if you will. But it's hard to not it's hard to not like the stuff because you guys you hit a lot of home runs so it it translates well to the to the end user to our customers so and we hope you keep on doing it and I I fully expect you th that you will. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dana. It's uh, fun to finally get on and, and talk uh, goalie. So I appreciate you waiting me out and, and get me on. So I, I appreciate it. Absolutely, my pleasure. Okay, see ya.